the key importance of peak power demand is that it determines how much capacity, how many power plants you need in your system. In particular, you need enough to cover both that peak demand and also some capacity margin, which means some additional capacity on top to allow for situations where demand is higher than expected or power plants go offline. By looking at typical demand curves, it's also obvious that peak power demand doesn't occur for very long periods. And so the capacity that you build to keep the lights on at those times of peak power demand spend most of the time not being needed because there's simply not enough demand to require all the available supply. In this tutorial I'm going to briefly introduce the concept of load duration curves. The value of load duration curves, as we'll see, is in better quantifying the amounts of time for which we need certain amounts of peak resource peak capacity and highlighting in particular therefore the amount of time that that peak capacity isn't being used during a typical year. Presented with power demand data such as this hypothetical list of data I put on the left so far we've been plotting power on the y-axis against time on the x-axis so we've been plotting the power data in the order that it occurs. So for example if we read that list of numbers from earliest at the top to latest down at the bottom we end up with a plot like the one on the right and in power term that's what we'd call a demand curve. And from a simple example like that it would be very easy to see the amount of time for which power demand was above say 50 megawatts. I could make an estimate by reading off the chart and equally I could just look through the data and I could pick out the periods, let's say these are hourly periods, in which the power demand was above 50. And so there are three periods in this example. It's much more difficult, however, faced with a power demand curve which is much more complicated, like this one for UK power for the whole of 2015, to, for example, say how often is power demand above 50,000 megawatts. I can pick out some peaks on this graph above that number, but actually when we think how compressed that data is on the time axis, to come up with any accurate estimate just from the graph is going to be very, very difficult. We saw in an earlier tutorial that each of those little stripes actually represents a week's data. You'd have to expand that data out quite substantially to come up with any real answers. And equally, as we'll see, to try and pick out from the raw data how often power is above 50,000 megawatts is going to be very very time consuming because there are going to be many many data points that you're going to have to sift through to pick out the periods at which the power demand is above the level you're looking for. There is another way of analysing that exact same data however which makes the task of seeing how often power is above a certain level much more straightforward. If I go back to my simple data set here, we saw that this was the demand curve. Another way I can plot that exact same data is to order it not by time, but by size. So now I've basically sorted that list so all the larger numbers are at the top and the smaller ones down the bottom. And then I'm plotting that data to produce the yellow line here. That yellow line is what we call a load duration curve. And again, in this simple example, if I want to know how many time periods the demand was above 50 megawatts, for example, I can read that off the chart, or I can start reading now from the top of the list and simply count off the number of occurrences above 50 megawatts. And when that method really comes into its own is when my list of data is not just 14 values, but is thousands and thousands of values over an entire year. So here's that UK power demand curve that we've seen on the previous slide. So plotting power on the y-axis against time, and I've labelled in, in days on the x-axis. And behind that chart is the data from which this comes. There's a column marked timestamp with these kind of labels. So year 2015, the month January, the 1st of January, and the time 005, so five minutes past midnight. 
and you can see they're in five minute slots, which means that there's an enormous amount of data. If I scroll down this entire sheet, you'll see that it goes down an awful long way until you get to 2015, 12 December, 31st of December at 2350. So this is where that idea of load duration curve becomes useful. If I scroll back up to the top, say I want to know how often power demand in the UK is above 50,000 megawatts. If I've got my data ordered by time, I'm looking in the demand column here, what I've basically got to start doing is scrolling down to that column to find examples of time slots where that number is greater than 50,000. And there's an awful lot of data to scroll through, so I can start scrolling down, scrolling down, somewhere around here, hopefully I'll find, here we go, some data above 50,000. So I could start marking that off, and then I'd have to keep on scrolling down. I might miss some. <clears throat> it's going to be quite a long task, given how many rows of data we've got in this data set. So what we can do with a load duration curve is rather than sorting this demand data in time order, we can order it in order of size. So if I sort that column largest to smallest, the graph updates, and I end up with a curve like this, a load duration curve. And now I can look at, I can look on the chart, I can see that Demand is only above 50,000 for actually a very few days, a very small amount of time. And now, because the data is in order, I can much more easily scroll down the demand column. I just keep going. Let's do it a page at a time. Remember, these are five minute time slots, so seems like a lot of time but okay so at this point all the time slots above that are above 50,000 everything lower down the, the table is below 50,000 and I'm up to row number 683 so if you multiply given that there's a couple of rows used up at the top if there's 681 of those time slots which are above 50,000 megawatts of demand, you can multiply 680 by 5 minutes. That works out at about 56 hours, or just over 2 days. So in other words, by sorting our demand data in order of size rather than order of time, it's much easier to know that the requirement for generating capacity to deliver more than 50,000 megawatts in the UK over the course of an entire year is only about two days, just over two days. So what we end up with if we sort our UK power demand data for the whole year by size rather than in order of time is a load duration curve for the UK in 2015 and it looks like this. We have the highest numbers to the left down to the lowest values off to the right. And what we can do with a chart like this and also the data that it's derived from is to see for how many periods during the year, how many hours, for example, power demand was above certain levels, let's say 35,000 megawatts. If I read across from 35,000 megawatts and project down onto the x-axis, it gives me around about 3,000 hours. So ranked in order of size, there are 3,000 hourly periods where the power demand is above 35,000 megawatts. And if I go to the right down the demand curve, I can look at, okay, how often was power above 30,000 megawatts? And again, I can do the same process. I can project across and read off. And you can see from the chart that there were about 5,500 hours during which power demand was above 30,000 megawatts. Equally, I can go the other way towards my peak demand values. There were about 500 hours during which peak demand was above 45,000 megawatts. 
you can also see that the load duration curve starts heading quite steeply up towards the left and so to answer our question how often was power demand above 50,000 megawatts from earlier on we can see that's going to be a very small number it's not going to be many hours at all and it's going to be quite difficult to read off the graph but much easier to read off our raw data if it's sorted in order of size. Just to show another example Here's the load curve for 2015 for the New South Wales region of Australia. Again, it's very similar shape, very steep uptick towards the peak values. So those peak values above, say, 11,000 megawatts in this case, occurred for very, very few hours during the year. Given the different scales of the UK versus New South Wales, which we saw in an earlier lesson, an easy way to compare those two load duration curves is to plot them not in absolute values, but in terms of percentage of peak demand. So the two curves converge at 100%, 100% of peak demand. But you can see that plotted on a comparative basis, that New South Wales curve is much steeper than the UK one at least for those few hours towards the left where we have our peak demand values. And I can show that better if I home in on that exact same curve. So we're plotting New South Wales against the UK. But here on the x-axis, I've just taken the top 50 ranked hourly periods during the year. And so this really highlights the different steepness of those two curves and actually it highlights that that difference in steepness is not really for the top 50 ranked hours by demand it's mainly in the top five or six hours ranked by demand what we can read from this chart for example is that in the UK there are roughly 50 hours of the entire year at which demand is above 95% of the maximum peak during the year. Whereas in New South Wales, it's only about five hours in which demand is above 95% of the maximum peak during the entire year. In other words, that top 5% of resources to meet maximum peak demand in New South Wales is only being used for about five hours in the UK, it's only being used for about 50 hours, so for longer, you're getting more use out of it, but it's still a very small percentage of the year. I mean, just to make that point for the New South Wales data, for only 0.05% of the year are we using the power generating capacity required to deliver the top 5% of demand. And to convert that back from percentages to actual numbers of megawatts, 5% of the peak demand in New South Wales over the 2015 period comes out at about 630 megawatts. So in other words, there's 630 megawatts of power generating capacity that is only being used for 0.05% of the year. So it's that kind of analysis where plotting your demand data in order of size rather than time becomes much easier. And plotting by size rather than time plots you a load duration curve rather than a standard demand curve. And it's a much easier and better way to analyse peak demand, and in particular the number of hours during the year that peak levels of demand occur for. And hence in particular to see for how many hours during the year do you need the capacity that is in place to deliver that peak demand. And what you'll find is that there's always a relatively large proportion of your installed capacity that is only required for a very small percentage of the year, a very small number of hours during the year. And if you've got something that's been invested in and has to be maintained, if that's called on very infrequently, it's going to be very expensive to use. It's going to have to charge a high price for the few occasions that it's called on, which is why peak power demand not only is important in terms of the capacity that you require, it also has a big impact on pricing. At times of the very peak demand, because you're drawing on assets that are used very infrequently, 
you can often get very high spikes in price. Okay, thank you.